Hey, what's up, one of you Let's dive in today to one of you Diet Rebels monthly food unlock with the emotional and binge eaters. You can go get it for free in a moment. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. But in case you haven't yet, if you are an emotional binge eater, if you want to learn how to look fit as a lifestyle, um, not a fad, not an empty promise program, then definitely please make sure you like, subscribe, follow my channel as I'm helping you live fit in your emotions, your mind, and your nutrition, your habits. It's really your daily micro habits that lead us to change. And if you deal with emotional binge eating, I want to let you know that you are not to blame, that there is hope for you, that there's a way to deal with our emotions and the stresses of life, their daily habits, and really breaking that down. And this free book that I made for you it's a workbook, and it's going to guide you through every step that you need to take in order to really see where your triggers are, why you do what you do, and then come up with a plan of action that's going to empower you. So go to 1afitbodymind.com forward slash free. You could download it for free. All you need is put in your email. I sent one weekly email, newsletter every week with powerful things for you. All right, so if you went and you downloaded the free guide, and if not, if you just want to kind of see what it looks like first, I'm going to take a step-by-step -step through. So you're going to see first, let's look at the table contents. So, of course, we're going to look at how I feel about food, myself, assess assessment, assessment on if you're emotionally in a food diary, identify your triggers, what makes you eat, and what situations make you eat, and then what are those emotions behind those. And I encourage you to do this step-by-step -step because if you skip over something, then you're going to be missing on a key component when I work with those who really struggle with emotional binge eating, this is the process I take them through in a simplified version. So after that, we'll look at healthy coping mechanisms and alternative activity list. We want to know what we have to um, do instead of our normal tendencies, alternative foods, and as well as techniques for managing those emotions. So what's healthy coping really look like and how mindfulness and emotional awareness and you know, we have to learn to expect negative emotions and what they mean and, and with the coping mechanisms we're going to commit to use and how to accept those unpleasant feelings that will arise and really to move into that place of self-acceptance and self-compassion and empowerment. It's only when we realize what we're doing. It's CBT, right? We're going to look at the cognitive behavioral therapy why we do what we do and then changing our behaviors and dealing with things in appropriate ways. So many times we're not told how to deal with our emotions. And unless we learn how to deal with emotions healthfully, in a healthy way, fit way, we won't ever have success. So then we'll create our healthy meal plan and we will make a full commitment. And then, you know, how to get help if you need that. And of course, for the resources on connecting with me, or with someone else. And so I know that this is possible if you're here, I'm proud of you, number one. Number two, there's gonna be bumps along the way. So what happens, we, we you know, sometimes it feels like we're taking one step forward, two steps back, but I guarantee you it's the other way around. You're taking two steps forward and one step back. So first, let's look at exercise one. How I feel about food, write out a complete description of how you feel about food. Be honest and thorough here. And I really wanna emphasize, be honest and be thorough. Write down all your thoughts. Was it used as, you know, when you were a kid? Was it used as a reward system? Was it used to quiet you down? What are your true and honest and real thoughts about food? And I have an example that's going to pop up here. As just to start, you know, food makes me feel better. It's a love-hate relationship. I think a lot of times when we have distorted eating, I'm someone who comes from, you know, a struggle with, distorted eating and relationship with food and I remember it was a it could be a love-hate relationship it could be a pure hate relationship it could be a way that I would use to numb myself by not eating it. so many different things and so here are some questions that are going to pop up that you can ask yourself and things to really think about do you eat more when you are feeling stressed do you eat when you're not hungry or when you are full do you eat to feel better calm or soothe yourself when you're sad, mad, bored, anxious, etc. Do you reward yourself? Do you, you know, regularly eat when you're, you're stuffed yourself? Does food make you feel safe? Do you feel like food is a friend? Do you, you feel 
powerless or out of control about your eating. Those are all the things that we can really think about and then exercise to I feel about myself. Write out a complete description about how you feel about yourself. Be honest and thorough again. Be the good and bad. I get so frustrated with myself when I'm not enough or I make mistakes, right? I know that I can do better and should. So I know for me, that was a big one. If I didn't feel like I was perfect, if I felt like I wasn't measuring up, I go to my distorted eating ways. I go to ways that were poor coping medicine. I had a very low self-esteem. So here's some questions to ask yourself. Do you frequently compare yourself with other people? Do you frequently feel self-conscious? Do you beat yourself up mentally when you make a mistake? Uh, you know, when do you assume others thinking about and talking about you and what you did? Do you think more negative thoughts about yourself than positive ones? Do you fear failure to prevent you from doing things you'd like to do? Do you have more physical features that you have difficulty accepting? Do you fear making a mistake in front of people? Do you experience anxiety in social situations? What about, do you feel bad about your past mistakes? Does it bother you considerably when you and others disagree with you? Do you do things you don't want to out of fear of disapproval or rejection? Do you minimize the th good things about yourself? Do you believe that you deserve whatever treatment people give you because you must have done something to cause it? That was a big one of mine, y'all. Do you spend a considerable amount of time worrying about how you look? Do you believe that if people could see the real you, they wouldn't like you? That was me as well. What about do you judge yourself as inadequate in any area of your life? Do you feel incompetent most of the time? When others disagree with you, do you criticize you? Do you assume you must be wrong and they must be right? Oh man, guilty as charged. You judge your worth by the people you hang out with. Be honest about these kind of things. This one takes some really good time and dig in deep to how you feel about yourself because this is going to be essential. And then next is the assessment on our emotional eater. My hunger comes on suddenly and strongly. I eat when I'm not supposedly hungry, for example, short amount of time after a meal. I have sudden cravings when I am not hungry, ice cream, pizza, cake, other junk food. My cravings are intense, demanding, and be, to be satisfied immediately. I keep eating when I'm full to even satisfy some emotional emptiness inside. I often feel guilty after binging. I feel like I have little or no control or what when I you know, behind my emotions and what I eat. And if that's you, the more yeses, the more you are an emotional binge eater, and that's okay, because we're gonna look now at a food diary. So keep your food diary of everything you eat for at least one week, and there'll be enough for you on there. Rank your hunger with one, being not physically angry, tend to being very physically angry. This exercise will allow you to identify your emotional eating that patterns. And I'm gonna pull up an example here so you can see it's pretty straightforward, but just in case you have any questions you're unsure how to do, I wanna give you an example. So. Notice I have a date at the time, 10 p.m., what I ate, large piece of pie and ice cream. I finished off my husband's pie and my kids. Uh, hunger one, I just got done with dinner two hours ago. Yes, I was stressed, angry, frustrated after talking with my mother-in-law. Maybe husband, child got in trouble, sister, you know, fill in the blank, job, work. What was it that caused you? What were those things? And even if you were really hungry, please put that every little thing do it each time and then identify your triggers so there's a list of common emotions that we tend to do because we have emotional needs you're going to circle those loneliness boredom anger guilt pain heartbreak sadness anger anxiety stress depression insomnia etc those are an example and then below you can actually write out your triggers you might have some other ones and um, for me a big time was not measuring up feeling like i didn't have worth for me a lot of times it was not feeling like I did enough that day, um, disapproval, um, stress, anxiety, fear, just so many different things, comparing myself to others or feeling like I was being compared or feeling like I wasn't heard or seen or understood. Uh, that measuring up was so big for me. And so really take some time and figure out what, what are your triggers? What are those emotions that you don't know how to deal with in a healthy way? For me, it was like all of those and more. So feel free to write as many as you need to. All right, what situations make me eat? So think, as you look through, you're gonna look through your your log now. You're gonna go back and see what are the situational components that made you eat. In my example, it was talking to my mother a lot caused me to be you know stressed out, caused me to feel bad about myself, work stress, and as I go grab donuts and lunch, 
if I can't control those kind of things? What what are those when my kid acts out, when I'm feeling overwhelmed, no, my husband isn't helping me, or I'm a single mom? And then how do I feel after I eat behind my emotions? And a lot of times we're going to be very self-condemning of ourselves. We're going to feel bad. We're going to feel like we are a failure. We're going to have all these things. We're going to feel sated from the moment we're like satisfied that like, oh, I feel good when I'm doing it. And then horrible afterwards, right? And so really be honest and vulnerable here. Look back at your log. Look through those kind of things and really write down how you really feel afterwards. All right, so let's now look at an alternative activities list. And this is the tree of figure out what we're going to do instead of eating. So to figure out what our triggers are, then we'll be like, once I have that trigger happen, I'm going to go do this. So there are some examples where you might reach out to a friend, have have someone you can reach out to, go to a movie, take a walk, taking a hot bath, reading a book, watching a comedy movie, journaling, getting into therapy, many more. There's so many different things that mindfulness, um, I teach mindfulness, figure out what you're going to do and then leave some alternative foods because let's say like we are going to keep reaching, right? So start changing it out. Don't keep unhealthy food it's in your home. My home doesn't have any unhealthy food. I only keep healthy foods. That way, if I reach for something, it's going to be healthy. It's going to be something that nourishes me. I'm going to feel better. I'm not going to feel as guilty if I reach and have an apple compared to a candy bar, right? So change out some of your foods. What can you do to look at alternatives? If you need help, please reach out to me. Okay, now let's look at healthy coping. All humans have to face to do with emotions in life, whether it's heartbreak or born. And the key is to have healthy coping mechanisms and learn to process those emotions in healthy ways instead of those self-harming, self-sabotage, right? It's kind of like we, went, we just went through. For example, talk about your feelings, journal. Learn to just let them and be them. Know that the feelings will kill you. They will pass, okay? I've had to deal with this, emo- this recently. So brainstorm coping mechanisms that you will use and commit to start using them today. So you kind of did that above. And then let's talk about mindfulness because we want to be mindful and emotional awareness and mindfulness when we are eating, right? So mindfulness means to think relatively and increase your awareness of each moment in every area of your life and your emotions and emotional state. So this practice is incredibly powerful and increasing your ability to separate your emotions from hunger. So this is a mindfulness diary now we're going to move into. Stay in the moment each day. Don't think about the next hour. The next day, just stay in the moment. No matter what you are doing, try as much as possible to fill this out on an hourly basis. Okay, notice I said an hourly basis. And I'm going to walk you through an example. Okay, so I want you to think every hour, you know, maybe set an alarm on your phone, something to go off. And so we'll go break this down step by step. We're going to go into detail for you because I really want you to be able to be empowered when you do this. And then we'll talk about the daily reflection as well that's underneath that. So first, it's going to tell you what time. What time did you eat? And I already said, try to do this hourly, fill in an hourly. So maybe you might even just want to prep this by writing it down. You know, the hours that you tend to eat, you know, is it from... Sometimes we tend to skip breakfast, but then by 10 o'clock we're starting. And so from 10 to 10 p.m. we're eating or from this time to this time. Because you might pick up things even at work or at home or with the kids that you don't even realize that you are eating. And if you have to do this hour, it's going to make you reflect every time you eat. So I'm going to do an example here at 4 p.m. Because a lot of times we have to get off or getting off work we just get home with the kids from school it's been a long stressful day right normally we're a little more hungry at this point if we haven't ate since lunch or sometimes just that stress at a cortisol level right and we want something sugary we want something that's not good for us we tend to eat more than we even realize and so rate your hunger with a scale of one to ten when starting ten very full so before eating i was a five after eating i was a ten because a lot of times we will keep eating, keep eating, keep eating, and we don't give that 20 minutes for it to register that we're hungry to our brain. And so we are overstuffing ourselves. And awareness is key here. The more aware we become to what we're doing, right, the better off we can make adjustments. And so where did you eat? Were there any distractions around you? Who did you eat with? I just stay home. By myself, right? But sometimes distractions, maybe you're watching TV. Maybe there's, oh, you know, the election just happened, right? So I was sitting there and I was eating stress because of the election results, right? I was sitting there eating stress because the COVID cases are going up. I was sitting there eating stress as I 
we did hear about the job interview as waiting for my husband to get home because I know it's going to be a stressful night as I wait to pay the bill, whatever it is, what was going on. And what did you eat? Half a bag of chips and queso, two small candy bars, right? It can add up. And then the next part would be how did you feel before, during, and after eating? So before eating, I was stressed. During, I felt so good because I maybe we were more stressed, right? Sometimes our stress goes up, but maybe I felt good. After eating, I felt so guilty. The right don't really kind of exactly how you feel listed all out there to hold back just any and all emotions and circumstances there. The more detailed you are, the more able you're going to be able to do the bottom part, which is that self-reflection. And remember, that self-reflection is so key. We can go so about our days and forget to ever really reflect on what's happened and why it happened. And I know myself, if I don't reflect daily, and day becomes a week, becomes a month, becomes another new year. And so I want us to do this daily and commit to doing daily, commit to do it at the end of every day, do this self-reflection. I said for the first question, were there any events, situations, say that provoked food cravings? What cravings were they? Did you eat anything out of habit? Because you're feeling happy, stressed, bored. Remember, emotionally it can be when we feel happy too. Maybe we use it to celebrate. So we gave ourselves the excuse to have an extra cupcake at work. Maybe you had a stressful place. You gave yourself permission. Maybe you always go get coffee and and a cookie around a certain time of day. Were there habitual things as well? And next, were there any foods that you enjoyed eating? What were they? Did you try new foods today or that you'd love to try? So as you start doing this, you're going to start making observations like, I do this or I tend to have this emotion and I tend to grab this. Maybe you might be changing out some foods. So to start trying to change out, man, we made that list of alternative foods. And then you have that notes, observations. I really need to make sure that I have a plan out every time I talk to my mother-in-law because I go for junk, right? Um, maybe you need to call a friend. So... Learn to expect and accept negative emotions. Write down your thoughts and plan for this. We cannot go through life expecting that we're not going to have a negative emotions and that we don't need to have plan to cope with them. How are you going to deal with it? Are you going to journal? Journaling has been huge for me. I'm someone who likes to journal and talk it out. What's your, you need to go daily on a walk and, and pray it out or get that mindfulness through you. What are you going to do? So really think through that because we can't, like I said, we just can't ignore it. We can't just wish it away. It's going to be there. It's going to happen. So you better make a plan of attack for it. And if there's any questions you have about it, maybe there's some things that you don't like about it, listen here. This is your chance to be real and candid. You know, there's no answers that are wrong, right? This is your thoughts. This is your feelings. So don't go just based on what I say. That's why I haven't given you exactly what to say because I want you to come up with your own. And then after we do that, what do my negative emotions mean? I want you to really think about this. What do they mean? Negative emotions are simply an alarm system going off in our body that there is something that needs to be addressed. And food's not going to solve it, right? If I run for food, if I run for the ice cream, it's